Good evening. Leading our news tonight, Niue government has signed a memorandum of understanding with New Zealand government with the commitment to tourism developments and other priority areas of revenue making. New Zealand Foreign Affairs Minister Honourable Murray McCulley signed the agreement with a message of commitment to the Niue people in an effort to boost economic growth and the concerted effort to increase private sector impact in development. Premier of Niue Honourable Toke Talangi said he was happy with the developments thus far and acknowledged New Zealand's contribution to the island's developmental purpose and economic growth. Much of the focus will be to ensure and increase the ability of the island in creating sustainable economic growth through the tourism sector as well as other necessary channels of economic development. The much needed funds promised by New Zealand was finally established and announced by the two leaders at the press conference at the Sky City Convention Centre on Monday to a sum of $15 million over a period of three years. This morning, the official opening of the Pacific Island Forum Leaders Meeting took place at the Cloud at the Viaduct in Auckland, New Zealand. The very short event took an hour or less for the Secretary General of the Pacific Island Forum Secretariat to Lama Nironi Slade to issue a brief statement on the purpose of the forum and to welcome all leaders to New Zealand before handing over the reins to the new chair, the Right Honourable John Keyes. Right Honourable John Keyes acknowledged the forum and all that attended and reminded everyone of the importance of cooperation within the Pacific communities and countries and the issues that needs to be discussed at the leaders' meeting. Four areas that will be focused on this year is firstly tourism. Tourism is a growth industry globally. It's also an area in which we have a strong competitive advantage with our cultural diversity, friendly people and natural beauty. Secondly, fisheries. The Pacific has the world's last great tuna resource, so there is huge potential to increase earnings in this area. At the same time, Leaders need to make sure that we develop the industry in a sustainable manner and avoid overfishing. Third, energy. The region depends on importing fossil fuels for its energy needs, yet it has the greatest potential in renewable energy and there is room to improve our energy efficiency. Fourth is education. It's vital that we have a skilled workforce to help us to grow our economies. Leaders need to work harder to get kids into school in the Pacific region and teach them the skills they need to succeed and contribute to the economy. Countries also need to help adults learn new skills. Some of the discussions that will take in leaders are those issues with youth development. The short opening ended with a couple of contemporary performances from Pacific and New Zealand youth. One of the observers said that the New Zealand Forum did not feel like the Pacific as a huge amount of police and security presence at the opening and around the New Zealand leader made it look like an event in the Middle East or Eastern Europe. Statistic Newe is preparing to carry out the National Population and Household Census this week. The last population census was held in 2006 that provides a snapshot of the people on the island and the places where they reside. It should be interesting to see what changes have happened in the past five years, especially in terms of the resident population of the island. But in order for information to be collected accurately, there was an enumerator's training workshop that was held yesterday. And we caught up with Kimri Vaha from the statistics office today to find out more. The population and household census for New Year 2011 uh, will be conducted um, starting on Friday, this, this Friday afternoon or evening, and then it will go on on Saturday and Sunday, and it will be completed by Monday. So, um, and that is the training that we had yesterday with the enumerators. Starting on Friday afternoon, enumerators will be going from house to house. To, that will include motels, hotels, and other areas to gather information. The general questions within the census will remain the same, but Kim Ray says that there will be some additional questions to reflect recent developments. The questions in the census will also, will also change to, to, to capture 
some of the changes that is uh, happening around us and, and around the world. Uh, say, for example, in five in the last five years, we know that we internet has already been used in new it, but not to the stage that it's happening nowadays. So prob probably five years ago, we just have internet as part of our work or something that we have over here. But nowadays, during for for our work and for most of the things we do, we must have internet. It's it's something these days that we must have. Statistics Beware are also hoping that all on the island will cooperate in gathering statistical figures that will be valuable for decision makers. We humbly ask if you could truthfully answer all the questions asked by the enumerators or the interviewers because it's only through the, the true answers that we will collect them as statistics that we will give them to government or users of the statistics, therefore they will make good decisions out of good statistics. Because if we give them the wrong information given by people who are respondents by you, then the decision will be wrong. Collection of data will take four days and the office will then collect information before moving on to data entry. It is expected that the census figures will be ready by the middle of next year. Only a few days to go before the Pacific Games comes to a close and Team Niue is yet to place on the medal tally. Communications with team management has been difficult, but an apparent miscommunication meant that one sport code arrived in Nomea only to be told that one of their events was cancelled. Niue's shooting team was amongst the first of Niue's sports codes to arrive in New Caledonia a week ago with seven male and two female shooters. On arrival, they were informed by organisers that the mixed teams event was cancelled, which meant no competition for Niue's female shooters. However, considering the amount of time, training and the fact that they were already there, they did get to shoot in the competition, even though there were no other female competitors. Niue shooting president Robert Tongyamana says that they were not informed of any changes or cancellations if they had known that they they would not have sent the next team, but it was an opportunity to expose athletes to that level of competition for development. Some would say it's a rather long way to travel and an expensive exercise for development and experience. Rather disappointing for some athletes, especially for those new to the sport who had prepared for the competition. Parts of the shooting team have now returned to the island. Also in line with Team Niue's participation at the Pacific Games, it appears that another sports code failed to show up, which was karate, meaning more penalty fees for Niue to pay. This Games is proving to be an expensive exercise, and unfortunately the national sporting body, Niskaga, officials were unavailable for comments, as they are all currently overseas. Last Saturday, Tuapa Uhomoto put on quite a display as the village hosted their annual show day with some families making a special trip from New Zealand to participate in this community event. The weather turned out splendid, which was a total contrast to last year. This year, the ladies opted to focus on making hats and floral arrangements. But it was the abundance of agricultural produce that was evident on the day. This may be due to the village being one of two villages selected as pilot project sites for the community-centred sustainable development project where households in Tuapa were involved in an energy-saving initiative as well as vegetable farming schemes which seemed to be working well. It was a good day out for the family with food stores being judged in two categories traditional and conventional as well as the modern contemporary ones. But it would not be a show day without entertainment as the day wrapped up with dancers from the youngsters and the youth playing their part. And those are our news stories that we have for you this evening. We do hope that you can join us again for our next news bulletin on Thursday.